Welcome to our 2019 Hardtail of the Year test. And we've just been talking about how many years we've been doing this, and it's seven years. And this year it was bigger than ever. We had 24 bikes across four categories. Now, Paul, you took care of the 750 pound bikes. Yes, I did, yeah. This is um, the third year I've done it, and the six bikes in my category. First bike's a Scott Aspect 930. Then we've got the Trek Roscoe 6, Cannondale Trail 5, Kona Mahuna, a Saracen Zenith Pro, and there's this bike in front of us, the Voodoo Bazango 29. So this is the winner in the sub 750 pound class. It is indeed, yeah. yeah. It's won three times, hasn't it? Uh, it has, and every time it's been in the test, it's been the winner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I went to the launch of this bike, and there was a lot of journalists there, and I don't think they really got it. And like, and it didn't get, it was, 20, it was pretty early to be a 29er. And there was a lot of focus on the more expensive bikes. But the minute I rode this, I was like, holy crap, these guys have made an amazing bike. It's always been like that. Yeah. Day one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, they changed the frame. Last year, there was a new frame, and this is what's in front of us now. But even- It was more of a tweak though, wasn't it? It wasn't it was, like a wholesale yeah, this, change. But yeah, yeah. even the previous bike was amazing. Yeah. I mean, it was just the best value, the best frame, and the best ride quality. And we're looking at this and going, okay, well, this, you know, it's, it's also the cheapest bike in the sub 750 pound class, but that doesn't mean it's heavy or got worse bits than any of the other bikes, does it? No, not at all, no. It's the lightest bike by a kilo, which is okay. two and a half yeah. pounds. Yeah, I think, I mean, well, you said the second lightest bike is a kilo heavier, and then there's a couple of bikes that are almost two kilos heavier. Oh, yeah, uh, which is like three and a half pounds heavier. Yeah, it's a lot. And that's, they're all the same, all roughly the same money. So yeah, yeah. you just get so much the weight is a big deal at this level. Yeah, but it's not lightweight, like as in, oh, it's a cross country focus. This bike's also got the best geometry, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not the most progressive. The yeah. Saracen so, yeah. probably has more progressive geometry, but this is quite contemporary geometry. It's like pretty low, pretty slack head angle. And it just, that translates to yeah, I mean, a really good ride. For anyone quality. getting on a bike for the first time, it's. It's pretty close, yeah, isn't it? To it's, what, like, it's easy to ride. Yeah, super like, easy to ride. If you got on an XE bike, yeah. it'd feel nervous and twitchy. Yeah. This doesn't feel like that. This fork on this bike is air sprung, yeah. so you can just adjust it for your body weight. Just attach a pump. Yeah, totally. You can set it up in the shop. Yeah, so you can, you know, like leave and it. And it's got rebound damping, so you can adjust that for how fast the fork returns yeah. for different spring rates and stuff. So I mean, that's I mean, that's one of the main. It's a hardtail, so there's no suspension on the rear apart from your tire. Yeah. So it's really critical that you get the fork nailed. Yeah. Because you really do ride the fork, don't you? You do. You're always yeah. on the front all the time. Yeah. And yeah, the fork performance in this test is the, the biggest difference between the bikes. It's yeah. the thing that makes them. If you've got a good fork, it really, it really sets them apart. It really it? makes the bike. Yeah. And I think brands can get caught up in the rear mech thing or the kind of fancy features or whatever, or the, the manipulated tubing and really miss the point is that you basically got to hang a really good fork on it. Yeah. Because if you don't, that's and you want to upgrade yeah. that's a yeah. big cost and the adjustment it just isn't there yeah, it's not people. worth it is it but the other there's a couple of other great things about this bike it's got really good tires yeah yeah like right. max's artists are great all-rounders yeah. so if you're riding like towpaths or trail centers or like natural trails i mean if it gets muddy or slippy then yep the tread's a little bit shallow but hey come on it's all a, of it, the bikes have yeah. that issue <laughs> yeah i mean these these are these are pretty these are these are pretty good compromise yeah for something that wants to that rolls quick and it's really predictable. Yeah. You don't get on this bike and think, oh, the bike feels nervous because it's got... Sketchy tires. Yeah, it's got <laughs> cross-country tires on yeah. or yeah. no tread or something. At least you can ride places with this. Now, one of the big concerns initially with 29-inch wheels was that um, they were bigger wheels, so they're more flexible and they weren't as strong. And to be fair, like on early 29s, I used to kill rear wheels all the time. Now I'm looking at this bike and it's got like a bolt-through quick-release front, but it's got a quick-release rear. Is this rear wheels? Still strong enough, or what's the deal? Voodoo have adopted the boost quick release spacing on this bike. Okay, uh, so, what what is, the, so what does boost mean? Well, on this bike, on our boost quick release, it's basically it's got a wider axle spacing. Yeah. Instead of 135, it's 141, yeah. but it's designed specifically for a quick release. For a quick release hub, okay. yeah. And what are the advantages of that? So, well, basically what you have is you have wider hub flanges. Yeah, so that brings the spokes further apart, it does. doesn't it? And so you have yeah. a stronger rear wheel and you also the chain stays go slightly wider. So you, so you get more tire clearance. More, more tire clearance. Brilliant. Yeah. That's a nice little touch, isn't it? It is. One of the bike in the test has got it as well. I think the Cannondale has it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, I think this will replace, I yeah. think boost, 
Boost quick release will replace standard quick release, which exactly, is the same yeah. way that, that it did with Bolt through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think next year you might see more bikes at this level have that, that feature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I think it's a really it's a really good thing for especially on a twenty especially on a twenty nine hundred bike like this. It's got good geometry and a good fork, and you can ride it hard. Yeah. You're going to make mistakes, and it like the rear wheels, that. the rear otherwise the rear wheel is going to take yeah. a pummel, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing I really like about it is the one by drivetrain. I mean, we talked, we touched on the fact that some of the bikes still have front mechs. Two of the bikes point. have got a front derailleur, yeah. And that means you have to like coordinate your shifting left and right and which gear you use and stuff. And this is just like up and down with one, one side. Yeah, and we said- Up and down the cassette. It's just super simple, isn't it? Yeah, we said, I think about two, three years ago that bikes at this level need to have a one by because it's really simple. Yeah. Easy for people to understand. Yeah. And it saves weight. Yeah, totally. And it, and it can take the money that there's the save as well. And put, put it in, it, put it put it in it elsewhere. Bits. Yeah, yeah. Not waste, not wasted on a front mech or yeah. cable routing and a shifter, basically. Because you yeah, don't yeah. need all that stuff, really. Yeah, totally. So it's got the best drivetrain, best tires. It's the lightest, the best fork. It's got really good shape and size. And is there anything about the bike you didn't like? The bar's too narrow. Okay. I said that last year. Yeah. And I haven't changed it. I also think it's a really cheap easy upgrade yeah you could take the bar off yeah a fit a slightly wider one in about 10 minutes how wide is the bar on the bike 720 okay i mean it needs like, to be 760. I, I remember not that long ago riding a, a 690 and think this is amazing because <laughs> like because yeah. bar widths have grown so it's not terrible is it? oh, it's no, not deal it's, not, it's not a deal breaker not, is it the bar, the bar issue is not unrideable it's not a deal breaker at all but this bike's 10 out of 10 this is yeah. we're looking for a perfect bike yeah yeah and if there's a little criticism, that's the only thing. Yeah. I think Voodoo were actually surprised when I was at the launch how enthusiastic I was about this bike because a lot of these kind of 750, 500 pound hardtails, they just no one had given them any love before. They were, no. like, they were like an afterthought to pack out a range of bikes, yeah? Voodoo came along and went, hold on a second, we can actually make a really good bike at this price point. Yeah. And I was like, oh, finally, someone's done this. Yeah. And, and, and to be fair, no one's caught up. Yeah. Voodoo took a gamble and it totally paid off. Yeah, well, yeah. it has because if you look at the test this year, all but one of the bikes are 29. In, in the this, in this sub 750 pound yeah. class, yeah. So they just went the right direction from the very beginning. And I mean, beginning. that, that category has evolved a lot in the past couple of years because we've always said that it was a bit of a no man's land. The bikes were a bit lost, weren't they? Like the yeah. thousand pound bikes are burly. They're like, they've got slack head angles, they've got fat tires. Everybody knows what you want to do and then you want to go into the woods and hammer around. The 500 pound bikes, I mean, even the, the Vetus in the 500 pound class is a bit more like a thousand pound bike. And then the 750 pound bikes were like, they didn't know, they were like kind of dumbed down XC, like heavy yeah. XC bikes with bad geometry and crappy components. Well, they and, were. And now there's been a shift, hasn't there? Yeah, I think those bikes that we talked about, like the XC bikes were like, a, they were like leftovers from the past where yeah. they were just reusing frames that they had. Yeah, I also think there was a case of you have an expensive version of that bike that had lightweight stuff on it, and then they just chip away at the lightweight stuff and keep the same frame. Yeah. And then you get down to 750 pounder, and it kind of wouldn't be light or fast, but it would have weird XC geometry. Yeah. I, finally, this, this year... This, the, the, the bikes this year were better than ever. Yeah, because there was all one bike that had a little bit of an XC feel to it. Yeah, the Scott. All, yeah, all the other yeah. bikes felt like proper trail bikes. Yeah. And it's, it, it's finally got to the stage where they're designed for the purpose of trail yeah. riding. And, you know, you see that this year. All the bikes are quite close. Yeah. But none are designed for purpose as much as the Voodoo Bizango 29. No. 